Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your ticker guy, Carl, coming at you from wonderful Niceville, Florida. I want to talk to you about high frequency trading again this morning. I've got two things to bring up. The first is that it appears that an awful lot of this high frequency trading is, in fact, nothing other than a fancy form of a bucket shop. We've talked about the front running aspect of it, and there seems to be a lot of that going on, too. You see, risk free trading, folks, is not possible unless you can cheat. So if you're able to arbitrage moves because you have the ability to see order flow before the rest of the public does, that's front running. That's illegal. Well, at least it's supposed to be, except that it appears that the SEC has granted some very special exemptions. Then we have this other problem, which is orders that are placed into these buckets where the proprietary trader, the person who is operating these dark pools and exchanges, is actually taking the other side of the order flow. That treads awfully close to the line of the bucket shop law, and in fact may cross it. I believe this needs to be investigated as well by the Congress. But today I want to spend my time mostly focusing on another problem, and that is data distortions and how they drive outsized market moves that have no relationship to reality. This morning I want to show you precisely what happened today, this morning at the open. Here is an indicator that is used by a lot of traders, myself included. It's called TRIN. It is the short-term momentum index within the internals of the market, that is the shares in the volume on the upside versus the shares in the volume on the downside. This indicator normally moves between about 0.5 and 2.0, with 0.5 being fairly bullish, 2.0 being bearish. But it is the rate of change and the change in that index more than the actual value itself that matters. So for example, a trend that is going from 0.5 to 1.0 is relatively bearish because it indicates that buying pressure is abating and selling pressure is coming in. Likewise, a trend that is moving from, say, 1.5 to 1.0 is bullish. And when you are trading for a, on a short time horizon, minutes or hours, this is an indicator that is extremely important to watch. This morning, there was a disruption in some data feeds for that signal. Not all. There were some charting systems that were showing the correct value, but one that I use in particular was showing erroneous values. And you can see here that these values were absolutely obscene. They were well over 100. That's impossible. Okay? That sort of number simply cannot be generated by any genuine mathematical computation of this index. But at exactly quarter of, you can see that the systems got fixed and the value returned to normal. Now up until that point, this indicator was apparently being disregarded by the algorithmic traders and the computers because the market was essentially flat and wasn't going anywhere. But look at what happened at the exact instant, almost to the minute, that that algorithmic number got fixed and started reporting a true value. All of a sudden, the computers saw what appeared to be a huge drop in the trend and immediately slammed on the buy button, sending the futures rocketing higher and, of course, dragging, dragging the rest of the market with them. The problem with this, ladies and gentlemen, is that this goes the other direction, too. We've seen data distortions like this on the downside. We saw them in September and October, and we saw them again in the, into the lows in March. And this is the kind of distortion in trading that is caused by the presence of high-frequency computers with or without any sort of market cheats. I don't know how you control this without getting rid of high-frequency trading in its entirety, but I will say this. Those of you that loved the rally this morning will rue the day that it causes a 400 or 500 point sell-off instead of a 150 point rise. Think about this before you say, oh, it's okay because the market went up. Distortions are wrong no matter whether they cause the market to rise or fall. Whether you're bullish or bearish is not the point. Whether or not you have an opinion based upon some set of facts on the ground, whether it be about the market or about the macro economy, is the point. Computers don't make those kinds of decisions. Computers look for what they believe to be risk-free opportunities. And after this ramp got started, the momentum players all saw this. Oh, the market's going up. It's time to buy. But what triggered the original move? Well, I think it's pretty clear from the data. The problem with this, ladies and gentlemen, again, is not the fact that the market goes up or the market goes down. It is that the movement itself is artificial. It is not caused by an underlying belief in the fundamentals. And the problem with that is... When we get to the point that markets are trading on this kind of computer-controlled electronic signal, all we're really trading on here is noise. What we've devolved into is a casino, where the outcome is determined by a random number generator, a pair of dice rolling on the table. 
instead of the opinions of people who are buying or selling. And you can say, well, that's a tremendous opportunity to get short if that move was false. Well, it's true, it is. And I'm sure a lot of people are. But the fact of the matter remains, ladies and gentlemen, your money, your money is not being bet in this market anymore based upon your view of the fundamentals or your view of the economy. This move this morning was based upon a false indicator signal. And this is an inherent risk and an inherent problem in a world where 50% or more of all of the volume on the New York Stock Exchange doesn't come from humans and from people. That is people behind computers. It comes from the computers themselves making algorithmic decisions based upon nothing other than numerical calculations of momentum. It's time that we take a very serious look at this and whether or not this serves the interests of investors not a handful of banks who pass shares back and forth amongst each other to ring up profits at your expense, but rather whether this serves the process of public price discovery. That is the purpose of an exchange, not to give people the ability to play games and trade based upon data, manipulated or not, using computers that have no brain and no soul. That's my opinion, and I'm your ticker guy.